What's going on guys? Hope you guys are all doing well out there and uh, to my friends and family and viewers and subscribers that are uh, affected by the floodwaters, you know, our thoughts and prayers are, are out for you. Uh, we were not affected by it here. I'm in the central United States, so I was way away from it, but man, just the devastation that I've seen. And, you know, uh, guys, no matter where you are on this planet, you know, or in this country, uh, you know, certain things, certain natural disasters and things like that can happen out of the blue and you best be prepared for it. I think a lot of people out there were not prepared uh, as we're seeing, you know, uh, people fighting over the last of the gasoline, uh, the last of the water, uh, the aid has the, the response to the hurricane and the uh, the government federal aid has been almost non-existent, at least up until this point. I think they finally turned on the FEMA stuff, but it's just been uh you know when you compare and contrast something like this event uh helene i think was the name of this hurricane that came through and caused so much devastation when you think about that and the way that the mainstream media reacted uh, if you're old enough to hurricane katrina do you guys remember what they were calling george w bush i mean all kinds of racist and everything else every label and name under the sun because his response was not quick enough and yet joe biden is asleep at the wheel and Kamala as well, because she should be like stepping up more, especially now that she's trying to present herself as someone who's, you know, a good candidate for the president, the highest office in the land. So uh, I hope you guys are prepping up, uh, you know, whether you live in tornado country or earthquake prone areas or or flood prone areas or even like these people out there many of them you know for a hundred years flood waters had never gone that high and man some of the stories i was hearing they were finding bodies human bodies in trees okay after the waters receded some of these towns have been wiped off the map according to the reports that i'm reading so again my thoughts and prayers and you know i mean i hope you guys were prepared and if you were and you were able to get out of there, I hope that hope that happened. I hope you didn't lose everything because that would be devastating to anyone, you know, whether you're a, a family, you know, a small family and you've got your memories, all that stuff is gone now. And I feel terribly sorry for them. But, you know, think about it. If you were setting up a homestead, a survival homestead, you had all your livestock out there. I mean, I'm sure that we're going to hear over the next few weeks of all sorts of just devastating stories related to this flood. And it's tragic. It's tragic. You know, and am I saying that, you know, Biden and Kamala could have come in there and done anything to change anything? Probably not. But they could have been, you know, Johnny on the spot as far as, uh, you know, trying to offer aid and relief to these people that have been devastated. But they're nowhere to be seen. So I guess it's my job to point that out. I'm not going to call them a racist or anything like that. Although you could point to the fact that a lot of these places where the floods happened are predominantly conservative people and they're going to vote for Donald J. Trump. So maybe that's their motivation for slow playing the relief. But I mean, who knows? We're all, it's all speculation at this point. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you guys because man, it's been a minute since I've been able to just take a break and turn on the camera and talk to you guys. As you can see, I've got the Mahindra out here. I've been brush hogging and I'm actually just taking a short break here to talk to you guys just about all the things that are going through my mind while I'm out here brush hogging. Like, you know, World War III, okay? We weren't in... We weren't on the verge of World War III under Donald Trump's leadership. So whether you like the guy or not, you know, whether he mean tweets or not, you don't like his attitude or his orange face or whatever the hell it is that's wrong with you, you need to see that we're on the verge of World War III. The one major difference is we have the weakest, most senile leadership that we've ever seen in modern U.S. history as president of the United States. And they have the audacity to run the person, the you know, second in command to this horrific economy that we're experiencing here. I mean, you know, fuel prices, while they have come down quite a bit. I think that they're tricking the system by, uh, from what I've been told by other people that are in the oil field, that Biden has continually dumped the, the uh, uh, strategic reserves, our strategic oil reserves. He's, he's, he's continually dumped that into the market to keep the prices artificially low. And if this goes off without a hitch and they're able to steal another election like they stole 2020, 
I mean, uh, guys, all of the all of the same tactics are being played right now. Joe Biden, where was he during the uh, 2020 campaign? He was in his basement hiding the entire time, not doing very many interviews. And they figured out they could get away with that shit. So now they're going to go f do that strategy every single time they can get away with it. And until the Republicans, you know, grow a pear, grow a spine, whatever you want to say, stop acting, stop acting like jellyfish and, 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 and fix this election process. You know, hey, uh, COVID's over. We shouldn't be having widespread mail-in voting anymore. That was a temporary thing. You know, you could argue, and I argue, that it's one of the ways that they manipulated the system like they did and were able to pull off a basically an underhanded miracle where, you know, the guy who didn't campaign, who couldn't draw a crowd at any of his rallies, the same thing is playing out, guys. And for us to sit around and think, oh, yeah, well, Trump's going to win this time without, a, you know, uh, I can just stay home and I don't even have to worry about voting. It's looking like Trump's going to win. If you do that, the country's over. Because if we don't have an overwhelming turnout on the 2024 election, I mean overwhelming to the point that it can beat the entire democratic cheating apparatus. That's going to be hard to do, okay? That's going to be hard to do. Uh, am I saying Trump's going to save us from everything? Hell no. But if he can reverse course on a lot of these things, it'll it'll turn the country around. It'll it'll make us go more towards a, you know, a national uh a, a good United States, a constitutional United States, which is all I want. So all hell is breaking loose. I mean, you know, more and more territory. The Russians are just taking territory in Ukraine like you can't believe. Uh, the immigrants, the invaders are taking over our country like you can't believe. They're going all, all, over, the, all over the place, including, uh, uh, what was it, Ohio. Was that Springfield, Ohio, or whatever it is? And, 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 you know, they've got a, what was it, a population of like 50,000, and they brought 20,000 Haitians in. I mean, that's... That's a severe imbalance. And I've, I, I didn't bother reporting on this, but uh, a few weeks ago I saw this report and they showed where the majority of the illegal aliens were being sent to. And guess what? It was all red states. They're, they're doing this intentionally. They're intentionally flying these people in. And, you know, I watched the vice presidential debate last night. Uh, obviously, I thought J.D. Vance won. I mean, it was a... He, I, I underestimated him. He is a very good speaker. He did very good on his feet, even on some of the gotcha questions that they were throwing at him. Uh, he fired back pretty well. Uh, and, and basically, they, the rules of the debate, they weren't supposed to do any uh, uh, fact-checking, on-the-spot fact-checking. But at one point, at least, uh, one of the media uh, chicks that was up there tried to fact-check on the fly, and J.D. Vance caught it. So that was pretty good. He called him out too, you know, so that's the most important thing. He said something about it. He didn't just see it and acknowledge it. No, he, he said, hey, you guys said that the rules were no fact checking and here you are fact checking me. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on. I thought that was great. Uh, Tim Waltz looked bad. You know, he talked a lot of stuff. And, you know, if you listen to what he was saying, some of the stuff didn't sound that outlandish, but that's because they have been able to do mental gymnastics to find a way to present socialism and communism as, you know, a good thing. That's what's been going on in this country for the last 40 years. And predominantly, the Democrats are pushing for Marxist policies, not the Republicans. So I'm going to continue to vote for Republicans, even though I know that there, uh, many of them have no spine. Many of them are like Mitt Romney and uh, Liz Cheney and all these other. I mean, look at what Dick Cheney and Liz Cheney are doing right now. They hate Donald Trump so badly because Donald Trump has called out George W. Bush on a few things like the Iraq war and other things like that. They hate his guts. And also because I believe that this is my own personal belief. Donald Trump is not a globalist. He's an anti-globalist. He doesn't like globalism. He's not a communist. He's a, you know, maybe not as hardcore of an anti-communist as I would like, but I think he's an anti-communist. And all that being said, He's what we need right now. We've got to get rid of all this socialism, communism, Marxism in our country and get back to liberty, you know, individual liberty, self-governance, small government, you know, uh, the smallest government, a small enough government that it'll fit inside the Constitution of the United States, which is what it's supposed to be, according to our founding fathers. So let's get back to that and do what we can do uh, to 
you know, bring inflation down, bring the price of fuel down. I think Trump will be able to do all of that stuff. You know, I mean, it's in his plans. It's in his plans. Uh, Agenda 47 or whatever they called it. Maybe it's 48. I don't remember. I think it is 47. But anyway, the point is he talks about all that stuff, bringing the energy back online, which will in turn bring the cost at your grocery store down. I mean, it's pretty simple, basic economics, and it works. You know, one of my favorite presidents that very rarely ever gets talked about in U.S. history is Calvin Coolidge. And not to say that I'm some expert on Calvin Coolidge. I don't know everything about him. He was way before my time. But he came into the presidency under uh, really bad economic policies and stuff. And what he did was amazing. He dramatically cut all of the taxes. And just by cutting the taxes, it created this, I mean, just wave of production inside the country. And that's what Trump needs to do. He needs to go in there and gut the IRS, gut the Department of Education, any of these bureaucracies that have grown to be too big for their britches or have forgotten what their original uh, mission statement was. These people need to be gone. These, these organizations, and that's one thing I loved about Trump. He was getting rid of a lot of regulation, uh, a lot of EPA stuff and all this. He was reversing a lot of these things, like the light bulb ban that Biden reinstated. And now you can't even, I mean, it's a basic thing. You can't even go find basic incandescent light bulbs anymore. And they've been kind of phasing them out for years. Uh, you know, I use those things to keep my well house from freezing up and to keep my chickens from freezing up. An LED won't provide that sort of heat. And if I go get a heat lamp, that uses way more electricity and produces way more heat than I need. So it's just stupid and idiotic because they have taken the choice away from the American people. Anytime they do that, that is tyranny. That is not liberty. You should have liberty to choose what kind of fucking light bulb you want to put in your socket. Period. End of discussion. I mean, it shouldn't be, we shouldn't even be talking about something this idiotic and stupid. You look at the, the fuel cans, what they did to the United States and our gas cans. If you're just trying to pour gas into a machine, you know, or diesel or whatever, they're, they're so restricted because, oh, they're so worried about spilling the shit that you end up spilling the shit even more than you would have with a traditional gas can. It just makes my blood boil. And if Kamala gets in there, if they're able to steal another one, I'm telling you guys, I mean, I don't like to be Mr. Black Pill, but I'm telling you, you better get ready. It's over. It's over. Everything in the United States that we have known will be over forever, and it won't be able to be restored. Because like, uh, uh, was it John Adams that said that? Liberty once lost is lost forever. And I don't want to take my chances with that. So hang on tight to your liberties, guys. Hang on to your pocket constitution. Know your freaking rights. Don't let people abuse them. When you hear these politicians dancing around and using all this mealy mouth, feel good verbiage to make you think that socialism is good, just read your constitution. Read about it. You know, also take some time to go study Marxism. You know, but if you want to know, uh, I'll try to give you this quote if I can remember it off the top of my head. What is communism in a single in a single sentence? It's the abolition of private property. Go look it up. Karl Marx said that. That's what it is. They don't want you to own anything. And what does that sound like? Sounds a lot like uh, Klaus Schwab's, uh, what did he call it? A uh, great reset or whatever. You will own nothing and you will be happy. I don't think so, Klaus. I'm not a communist. I'm not going to be happy under those circumstances. And in fact, I won't lick commie scumbag boots, okay? So, uh, you know, like Charlton Heston said, you're going to have to pry my private property out of my cold, dead hands, you damn fool. Come and try it, you evil bastard. So anyway, guys, I think I've gone on long enough. Uh, sun's going down, so I got to get out here and do a little bit more brush hogging uh, while I've still got a little bit of light left. But let me know what you guys think about all this, the chaos that we're in right now. What are you doing extra to prayer, uh, prepare? I mean, maybe that's the answer, prayer. <laughs> I almost accidentally said it. Maybe that's what we all need to be doing is praying for, you know, calmer, cooler heads to prevail in all of these situations. We need to take everything down uh, before it turns into full scale, you know, uh, un irreversible World War III. That's what I'm afraid we're headed towards. And I think Biden and Kamala and all the people that are currently in charge are pushing, pushing us towards that cliff. And once we're over the cliff, I don't care who comes in. There ain't no one doing it. So anyway, guys, back to brush hogging. Appreciate you tuning in. As always, I stand for liberty to the bitter end.
I hope you do too.